Unlike the scenario with SFTP, where you're moving files back and forth between your local computer and a remote computer, the command line environment also offers several options for downloading files from online. We'll take a look at two of these commands, curl and wget, here. We'll start with curl and use it to download a GFF formatted annotation file for the Arabidopsis thaliana genome that's available through NCBI at this site. I've added a link to the site and a comment pinned to this video in case you want to try it. I'll first right click on the link and select copy link location. With that link copied to my clipboard, I can type curl and then paste in the link with a space separating the two, and I could run it just like that. However, the default for curl is to print the contents of the download to the screen, which usually won't be helpful. If you do this accidentally and end up with lots of text being printed, Control plus C should cancel the operation and get you back to your cursor. Because of that behavior, the dash O option is usually important to include in a curl command. It allows you to provide the name of a file that the downloaded contents will get printed to. For example, I'll write the contents to afal-ter10.gff.gz. Since the file online is gzipped, the downloaded contents will be compressed in the same way, so I included the .gz extension on my file name to clarify that. After running that command, I can list the contents of my directory, and I see that new file. A popular alternative to curl is wget. Like curl, wget will accept a URL and download a file associated with that URL. Unlike curl, wget will by default print the contents to a file, so specifying an out file name isn't necessary. But wget has quite a few additional options too. Let's say you wanted to download not just the GFF annotation file associated with this genome, but the genome itself and all of its associated files available through the RefSeq database. Those are available in a directory at this site, which is also in the pinned comment. If I click on the tear10.1 link, I see all those files and also a subdirectory that has further subfiles and directories in it. Instead of downloading each of these one at a time, like we do based on the curl example we just looked at, we could go back and get the link for the directory containing all of these files. Again, I'll right click and select copy link location. Then I'll try including the dash r argument, which indicates I want to do a recursive download. Checking the contents of my directory after I run that, I have a new folder from NCBI. Inside, there are two items, a genome subdirectory and a file named robots.txt. If you continue down through the genome subdirectory, you'll eventually find a file named index.html. This file contains URLs for all the individual files we were targeting, but the files themselves weren't downloaded. This is because of the presence of the robots.txt file that we saw in the NCBI folder. This file is there to help protect the server, in this case NCBI servers, from getting bogged down with large downloads. By default, if that robots file is there, wget will recognize it and will not download the files themselves, but instead you'll end up with just the index.html file. In such a case, if you want to override the presence of the robots.txt file, you can include an additional option, dash e, and specify robots equals off. But before we run that, I'll highlight one more argument that will be important here. The argument dash np stands for no parent. Without this argument, wget may move both up and down the directory structure looking for files to download. Generally, you'll probably only want the contents within the directory you're targeting, so including the dash np argument can be useful. If I run this command, I again see the directory that was downloaded from NCBI, and moving down through it, I get to a subdirectory that this time contains the files I was targeting. A combination of SFTP and either curl or wget will likely give you adequate tools to take care of the majority of cases you'll encounter in which you need to put files on or take files off of a remote computer.